The wealthiest criminal in the world is not who you think it is. When you hear the phrase, the richest criminal in the world, who comes to mind? Mafia bosses, cartel bosses, or anyone of that kind? While it is true that crime doesn't pay, some of the world's wealthiest people might prove us wrong. This is Crime Flicks, your number one stop for crime stories. There isn't exactly one wealthiest criminal. It's the crimes and the organizations that make wealth, making their leader the wealthiest. With the secrecy and confidentiality that these organizations keep, it's difficult to find out how much money they've amassed over the years of operations. The crimes are often highly profitable businesses and trades which these organizations run skillfully. The Italian government sees 2 billion euros in bank deposits, 3,000 companies and 12,000 properties from the mafia. They commented that it was harder to manage these assets than confiscating them. Illegal drug sales and narcotics are the most profitable crimes of many major organizations. One of the few criminal organizations being rich is the Taliban. The main source of their money is opium and heroin production, and it's illegal trade. They extort money from hostages, pirate mining, and donations from multiple sources. According to the official reports, the UNSC estimates Taliban having an annual revenue anywhere between $300 million to $1.5 billion annually. The Sinaloa cartel is responsible for 60% of the drug revenue globally, which makes them one of the wealthiest organizations. Fortune magazine estimates the cartel is worth $3 billion. The Endrangheta, another major organized crime group, which controls the transatlantic trade of cocaine is said to be worth $4.5 billion by the authorities. Camorra, the Italian mafia, and Sonstevskaya Bratpa, the infamous Russian mafia, are each worth a staggering $4.9 billion and $8.5 billion respectively. The Chinese triad stays at the top of the food chain with a $13 billion net worth. All these values, even though official, are just estimates. No one knows the exact amount of money the organized crime groups make from their trade. It can never be exposed because of how discreet and secretive these organizations, their transactions, and their deeds are. Drug trafficking is the most lucrative form of business for criminals, with an estimated annual value of $320 billion. UNODC says that roughly half of the income from organized crime comes from illicit drug proceeds equivalent to between 0.6% and 0.9% of the global GDP. When the financial crisis hit the banks in 2008, it was the drug money that saved certain banks from shutting down. In more simple words, it saved the world from an economic recession. The drug trades and gangs are worth over $400 billion, as estimated by the UN. So, what do you guys think about all this? Well, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications whenever new crime-related videos are posted. Now continuing, the banks in the USA and several other countries had a liquidity crisis, meaning they had no money to put into circulation. The banks started offering low interest rate loans to consumers to buy homes. This was pressured by the US government passing financial regulations. The increase in buyers caused the housing prices to shoot up rapidly, which made people take out loans to buy homes they can't afford. The increasing number of consumers defaulted on their mortgage loans and the banks lost the money. This made it tougher for businesses and consumers to get credit. The world was in a threat of an economic collapse and something needed to happen very quickly to avert this crisis. This is where the booming drug trade comes into the picture. During 2007 and 2008, North America and 27 European Union countries consumed 80% of the cocaine, which is estimated at $88 billion. The money the criminals made are laundered into the financial system. The huge amounts of money are made and divided into small amounts and then are smuggled into countries with less financial regulations, and they put it into banks, thus getting it into the financial system. They cover up any links connecting the money to its illegal source, basically legitimizing the money. During the liquidity crisis, it was a win-win situation for both the banks and the money launderers since the bank was in need of money and criminals needed to put their money in the financial system. And it worked out well for both parties. The IMF once stated that the annual amount of money laundering worldwide could be between 2-5% to of the global GDP. 
that would be around one to three trillion dollars. If we try to pinpoint the richest criminal in the world, that would probably be Pablo Escobar, the king of cocaine. He is unparalleled in terms of his money and crimes. Even years after his passing, Pablo Escobar is still one of the most infamous names in the criminal underworld. Escobar was a person with a variety of character attributes we don't generally expect from a brutal criminal. From drug lore to philanthropist to occasionally an attentive parent, Escobar, who was the son of a farmer and a teacher, started committing crimes when he was still a teenager. He started out by peddling phony degrees and bogus report cards. He began smuggling stereo equipment and tombstones and selling it thereafter. In 1974, he was initially detained for auto theft. Later, he established himself as a drug smuggler and contributed to the development of the Medellin Cartel as a criminal organization. With a weekly income of $420 million from the Medellin Cartel, which dominated the cocaine trade, Escobar was one of the wealthiest individuals in the world. He spent the extra money that he had. Escobar had a luxury lifestyle that included private jets and opulent residences. He allegedly offered to pay off Colombia's $10 billion debt in exchange for being spared from an extradition agreement for himself and his family. He burned $2 million in bills to keep his daughter warm. That clarifies how wealthy he was. He owned about 200 animals in his own private zoo. He acted philanthropically to win the support of Colombians, who then began to refer to him as Robin Hood. He constructed houses for the impoverished, stadiums, and even sponsored the neighborhood soccer teams. In 1982, he won a position as an alternate in the nation's Congress. Escobar made a deal with the police in 1991. He would surrender if he could construct his own jail. Unexpectedly, or perhaps not, Colombian authorities concurred. The opulent La Catedral was the end outcome. The complex had a nightclub, a sauna, a waterfall, and a soccer field, in addition to having phones, computers, and fax machines. Escobar was transferred to a less hospitable prison after he tortured and killed two cartel members at La Catedro, though. But in July of 1992, Escobar escaped before he could be moved. Following his escape, the Colombian government initiated a large manhunt, apparently with assistance from American authorities and competing drug traffickers. On December 2, 1993, Escobar allegedly enjoyed cake, wine, and marijuana as he celebrated his 44th birthday. His refuge at Medellin was found the following day. Escobar and a bodyguard made it to the roof as Colombian forces attacked the building. Escobar was killed by gunfire after a subsequent chase and gunfight. Escobar's suicide, however, has been theorized by several. The drug kingpin had previously stated that he, quote, would prefer to have a cemetery in Colombia than a jail cell in the U.S., unquote, if he were to be apprehended. Pablo Escobar may or may not have regretted leading a life that was nothing short of a Hollywood film. It was not a life well lived, but it had both positive and negative impacts on other people's lives. And now he was wealthy. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Crime Flicks.